All right, I'm here with Pippa Moss, um, who I met via YouTube. Um, and so Pippa, you are an actress, you are an acting coach, you're a you YouTuber. And like I said, that's how we got connected. Mm -hmm. um, thanks so much for being on here. I wanted to uh, do this Zoom uh, chat with you because for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because you are an actress based in the UK and uh, I don't have really any experience with uh, that side of things. Um, uh, across the pond, if you will, but, um, and, and also your kind of acting journey is very different from mine. You went mm -hmm. to drama school and everything like that. And I, my journey could not be more different having mm -hmm. gone to having done a completely separate career in the corporate world before I found myself, uh, diving into acting. So I thought this would be a great way to kind of chat and kind of do a compare and contrast of like all the different, you know, avenues that people find their way into acting. Um, so yeah, first of all, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I love your videos. And when you reached out, I was like, yes, let's yeah. chat, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, this is really exciting. It's, it's fun to kind of meet people or see people on YouTube first and watch their videos and then get a yeah. chance to do something like this. Yeah, it's great fun. Love yeah. it. Thank you for having me. So the first thing I would love to just hear is um, how you became an actress, like what what it was, what was it, you know, when you were, was it when you were a little kid or what was it that, you know, sparked that journey to becoming the actress that you are now? Yeah, I think, oh gosh, a few, a few things really. I think it was mainly TV and film because when I'm from quite a working class, working class background mm -hmm. in Essex near London and yeah, the TV was always on. That's what we did for recreation, really, telly. Um, and so I remember quite specifically this one time, I'd, I'd watch adverts and shows. Every time I'd go to the restroom, I'd always pick a product up and like do a commercial for it in the, in the mirror. <laughs> so that's one thing I used to do. And there was one time I picked up my mum's razor and I did like a little finger glide across the razor and cut my finger wide oh. open. I was like, mom! <laughs> so that was, that was one thing I used to do, which looking back now is actually... I suppose how I kind of started acting yeah. and experimenting a little bit. Um, yeah. But apart from that, it was films, things like Mary Poppins. I used to reenact mm -hmm. all of the songs and the dances. I think I got a VHS of Cats the Musical, which really piqued my mm -hmm. curiosity, even though it's just balmy. Um, so yeah, it was kind of just watching it on the telly and on video, pausing, rewinding, trying to recreate it. Mm. Um, yeah, and after that, I got into amateur dramatics, which I think is like American community theatre. Is that like where you just a, a group of you get together and put something on that yeah. are not professional? Yeah. Yeah, so you're not like you're not making any money doing yeah. it. Yeah, right, right, if right. anything, you pay to do it, right? right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I did I did that a lot as well, and luckily I fell into some good. Amateur and this was this was at what at what age? Good question. That was so that would have actually been around sixteen years old. I started. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was actually quite late into it. At secondary school, I had a really good drama teacher who started kind of push me a little bit with it. Mm. I was a really shy kid, mm. really shy kid. Um, and yeah, it was from there, I kind of got told you could do this for a career. Then I joined some amateur dramatics companies for a few years while I was at sixth form studying and working part time. Um, and then I worked for a few years and then, yeah, went to drama school and have got into the profession that way. Yeah. So that's my that's, brief backstory with acting and how it all happened. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's really cool. And when you were, when you were a little kid, like doing the, um, like watching a movie and acting it out and mm -hmm. that, that type of stuff, was there anything in your head at that point of, of, like, did you recognize that the people that you saw on TV and in movies were actors or, or had a profession? Like that's something that you could potentially do as an adult. Did you have that in your mind? No, no idea. No, because I'm not from a performing family or anything mm. like that. None of my family had even gone to university or anything. You know, we're very, mm. you get a normal job and you just live a normal life kind yep. of people really. Yeah. Um, so no, it wasn't until I got the, the video of Cats that I mentioned, mm. there was like a behind the scenes section at the end. Right. And then I was like, oh, and I watched that and I loved the makeup and you'd see their transformations and they'd suddenly become a cat and all this sort right. of thing. Um, and I was like, oh, they're kind of ordinary people. And there was one story in particular of the, um, oh God, what was her name? Rumple Teaser's character, the actress who played Rumple Teaser. She was just like, oh, you know, I'm a nor normal girl from Scotland kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, I'm a normal girl from Essex. Maybe I could do that. And then, yeah, it was drama teachers at secondary school that were like, mm. you can go to a drama school and you can become an actor. And I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's 
I think it's really cool that you mentioned that you saw the behind the scenes thing, because yeah. I, that seems to be a repeating pattern that I've seen. Because in one of my really? videos, I ask people to comment and, and tell me like why you want to be an actor or what inspired you to be an actor. And, and uh, there's quite a few comments of people saying, well, I watched this behind the scenes thing one time, you know? Really? Yeah, that seems to happen a lot. I think, I think, especially the younger actors, when they first, when we first watch movies, it's, you know, they're just people on the TV and we don't really connect the dots of like those mm -hmm. people are that's their profession and that's what they do um until you watch it behind the scenes you're like oh these are real people and then they turn it on and become actors on screen exactly yeah. and i think the dvd when dvd started coming out there was often like the bonus disc yeah. wasn't there. and yeah. i remember just always like trying to get the double disc edition or something and yeah. you know watching all the behind the scenes yeah it's amazing isn't it but yeah, interesting. It's really cool. That's how a lot of people start out. I yeah, think. it's something that that I, yeah. I it was surprised me to see uh, that come up so often. Yeah. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention when I introduced you in the beginning. So you're also a panelist. Um, and yes. prior to seeing one of your videos, I had no idea what a panelist was. Um, so and there are probably plenty of other people that also don't know. Um, I don't know yeah. if that's a big thing in uh, acting schools in the U.S. either you know i'm naive to it because i didn't really go that route maybe yeah. there are plenty of people that know about it but um i'd love to just hear you explain exactly what you do as a panelist yeah so essentially i'm on the panel simon cowell-esque but mm -hmm. obviously not as glamorous um <laughs> for bristol vic theater school so that's where i trained um and then a few years out i was living back in bristol for a time and they knew i was around so they just invited me back to start becoming part of the panel who actually host the auditions to get into drama school. And yeah, so now I just work regularly with my old drama school and I've kind of mm. gone full circle from being the hopeful auditionee to get in. And now I actually watch all the auditions and, and make that call with my colleagues. So yeah, that's what I do, it's great. So normally uh, the the average auditionee, auditionee, auditioner, uh, uh, the average person that goes into audition <laughs> um, that, that you're paneling on, they are typically high school students that just graduate high school and they're looking for that next step, right? Quite often, yes. I do, you do get the odd 40 year old or mm -hmm. old, you know, someone who's lived a little bit. I had a, oh, I can't go into too much privacy, but like someone who's actually worked in the profession for quite a long time, but is just lacking training and has worked in TV presenting, mm -hmm. you know. So you do sometimes get the occasional someone who's a little bit older and more experienced in other things. Mm -hmm. um, but most, for the most part, yeah, they're definitely a lot younger, mm -hmm. definitely between 17 and maybe 27, I'd say, is like the average mm -hmm. chunk we get, decade of life we get coming through the doors. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that, um, well, that kind of leads me to what what I wanted to so a lot of these questions are, are just for me because I don't really yeah, uh, know yeah. too much about um, the, the the world in both uh, the drama school world and also like that, uh, the acting world in the UK, because I think there is kind of a cultural difference yeah. of how people approach it, right? Um, so uh, one of the things I was wondering is uh, what, what would you say are the differences? Because we all know there's, um, I'm obviously a big advocate of, actors getting training, but there are many ways to get training, right? So for, for in your opinion, like actors can go to drama school. They can also go to a university that has a drama program, right? A theater program, or they can get uh, private acting classes, which was the way that I, I took, right? Just, just yeah. going to month to month paying and getting uh, going to an acting teacher and learning that way. And there's, I think there are pros and cons to all of them, right? So yeah. what, what would you say are the differences? So I, I think it is slightly different in the UK in terms of um, like university courses. So you can go to an ordinary university and do a drama course mm -hmm. or th they're never normally called an acting course. It's normally a drama degree or like drama and literature or drama mm. and psychology or something like that. Um, from my experience, anyway, I do know there's some schools that are quite good with um, their drama degree, but it tends to be more academic. And if you went somewhere like Cambridge, they've obviously got, I think they're called Footlights, which is like their kind of society for acting. A lot of people come out of there, for example, mm. and then go on to the profession. Mm. Um, but in terms of like, if you want to be an actor in the UK, I'd definitely say get a training 
if you can just to have like a good solid foundation of everything but also I would say there's nothing wrong with working and getting lessons outside at the actor center in London or another course somewhere or doing there's lots of short courses you can do online and offline um so yeah I, th I think I don't know from my experience again because I've not lived in America I'm not sure what it's like at your um you call it college don't you isn't college yeah. university yeah. yeah so at college I think there's a lot more um I don't know I think bigger kind of productions and things that go on there's some really amazing colleges right that you can train at to do mm -hmm. acting mm -hmm. yeah in the UK I would say it's a bit more far and few between from the research I did when I was applying mm. um so I would say if you want to be an actor in the UK I'd go to drama school and start doing other lessons outside of it mm -hmm. and if you want to go to university you're probably going to be a drama teacher or um wow. maybe someone who studies it more academically and I not see. enter it and, and doesn't necessarily enter the profession I see um but you do get the odd person that does that and then goes to a drama school and trains or or just you know gets lucky yeah um or start studying outside of that as well at other schools and foundation courses but yeah I'd say is, the sure five things to do is go to drama school in England so do you think that's like a big that's a big thing to have on a resume is your when, when or CV right is what you would say yeah um, uh it's, it's a big thing to have like on on an actor's CV uh is the drama school that you went to um, yeah I think it does help quite a lot there's mm -hmm. quite a, there's a few like that are considered the best mm -hmm. and I know that they're quite renowned worldwide as well and mm -hmm. I think there is something about British training there was mm -hmm. a um so at Bristol Old Vic there's a course for international students and I know like loads of them that have oh interesting gone back yeah and it's a brilliant course um but it's just a year-long kind of you normally get more mature students going to that but yeah. a lot of my friends who were on that course and stayed in London didn't some of them did very well but still weren't getting the kind of jobs they wanted but as soon as they went back to Canada or America they actually started doing a lot more because oh, okay. people were recognizing where they trained in the UK yeah. and it was kind of a bit more attractive yeah um so yeah I mean it depends as you know acting is a funny old profession yeah. but um yeah I think Certain drama schools definitely carry a lot more accolade right. than, than others, for sure. Right. Another thing I was wondering is, especially for the like the 18 year olds that mm. are applying for the first time, um, if they're like, I don't know, in high school, does you said you had an acting mentor in yeah. high school, but yeah. does every high school have like um, acting and drama? You know, I don't understand how some like 18 year olds can be expected to have any sort of I know. You know, prior training before auditioning on your panel right yeah there's quite um it's quite heartbreaking actually because in the UK I think our government aren't really supporting the arts very well currently but also in schools a lot of schools are actually stopping things like drama class mm. um and just drama lessons in a timetable it's not actually something that's deemed essential for these lovely young people to learn which is just right. crazy um but I think that um yeah there's it depends again I went to a school where I had an ex-professional dance teacher teaching us and an ex-actor in the drama department so they kind of knew the profession and how it worked and they guided me really well but I don't think every school has that um I think a lot more private schools do have a more supportive um and useful drama department perhaps because they've got the financial backing to really delve yeah. into that um but part of the reason I started my YouTube channel is because a lot of working class actors don't have access to that and the yeah. main thing they'll do is either amateur dramatics like I've said uh -huh. or there's lots of little kind of like Saturday clubs that people can go to like stagecoach or I think there's one called the Pauline Quirk Academy, who's a famous British actress. Um, oh. but, so you can do like little clubs and things like that. But yeah, if you're applying to drama school at 18, quite often there isn't really all that much open to you and helping you develop to get into drama school. So are there people yeah. that like get private coaching outside, like to, to coach themselves to before they go to the panel? And audition? yeah, okay. yeah, I coach most of my students are people trying to get into drama school oh, that, makes that sense. maybe yeah that maybe haven't got that much experience or just need some extra guidance or want a second opinion and to rework their speeches mm -hmm. um so yeah there's plenty of oh, there's so many like different acting coaches and mm -hmm. courses call them courses you don't really get anything out like a grade or a you know yeah. qualification right. at the end of it but right. it's a kind of acting trial where you can do it on a Thursday night and Saturday morning or something but apart from that yeah I'd say there's not not all that much available well so for um 
for anybody that's watching who is uh, in the UK or really anywhere, I think we, we can have advice that's for everybody. Um, but uh, if, if someone is thinking about getting into acting, um, uh -huh. whether they are, so I think there might be different advice for um, if someone is 18 versus like you said, if someone is 40 and, and getting into it, um, especially for someone who's 18, someone who's really young, who's just like, just getting into like starting their life pretty much um, mm -hmm. as an adult, how would you, what, what's some of your advice for, for someone who's trying to do that? Hmm. First thing I'd probably say is don't, it sounds kind of, it's not pessimistic, but if you don't get in the first time trying, don't think that's a reflection of your skills. Quite often it is because right. we get so many young people come through, you know, and we just want you to grow a little bit and have some of that life experience that we're all lacking at 18. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say have a long, long-term mindset about it. Mm. That's probably the first thing I would say. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd just say like get stuck in and start learning what you like and dislike in the art form. Do you prefer films? Do you prefer theater? Do you like physical theater? Who's your favorite practitioner to kind of work with when you're approaching a script? I just, I just say get stuck in and try anything and everything that sparks some bit of curiosity in you. Um, because I think then you can start to figure out more of, like I say, who you are. Um, and I think when you're applying for drama schools in particular, or just getting into the acting profession, the more confident you are in yourself, right? the more confident you'll come across in an audition, right. you know, and in the room. So I, I don't know, is that, is that good advice? <laughs> no, I think it is. I, I mean, I think that applies all the way throughout your career, right? Yeah, it, it, to really look at it as a long-term thing. Yeah. I, I shared uh, in one of my videos that, uh, cause I keep track of all my auditions in the spreadsheet. Right. And that's, this is yeah. kind of my, uh, it's, it's my engineering background, <laughs> taking, taking hold of my acting career. But, um, I think it was back in 2017 or 2018 okay. that I had this span of like 37 auditions, uh, with no bookings. Right. And, the, and I shared it because I said, you know, this was someone who had already been uh, a working actor for 10 years almost. And I still go through these long uh, spells of, of not booking. And so I try to encourage the people who are brand new that if you do your first 10 auditions and you don't, don't book any, any of them, you know, that's nothing, right? That's nothing no, yet. Exactly. And it's not a reflection of, of your talent. It's not a reflection of what you could potentially uh, achieve in the future. You know, you just got to keep pushing through um, and keep, keep trying to improve, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right. So... Um, oh, another question that I had, uh, because I have zero musical talents. Um, and so I was wondering for people that are applying to drama school, does it, I think the, um, the general kind of idea of a drama school is like musical theater. And Bye. so uh, I, I think the assumption for some people is like, oh, I got to be really, I got to be a really good singer or yeah. stuff too. Is that true? Or are there are also programs that are strictly drama. There are, so, so on an acting course, you are still going to have to sing at some point, really? most likely. Yeah. Um, but, the, but when you're auditioning, for example, like mm -hmm. we don't want to see someone singing Define Gravity and freaking nailing it. We just mm -hmm. want to see you tell a story. It's more of an opportunity for you to share another character mm -hmm. um, and another medium of storytelling. Mm -hmm. So I think, so, so Bristol Vic do, I know, I think Rada asked for a song as well, actually. Oh God, I can't remember. Um, Royal Welsh asked for a song like there's lots of drama schools that ask for a song in an acting course audition but like I say just if you are trying to get into drama school and you're worried about the singing part and you want to do an acting course it's not about the singing it's about the acting so okay. yeah but then there okay. are of course musical theatre schools which are incredible like Lane's Arts Ed uh, I think Arts Ed's like probably like the biggest one um, there's a school called PPA, which I did a foundation course in, actually, which is really mm -hmm. good in Guildford. Um, but yeah, musical theatre courses, they tend to ask for a contemporary song and a legit song. And they want to see a little bit more mm -hmm. of how good you are at that at that point in time. And obviously, it's a lot more dance heavy. Oh. Um, but yeah, in the drama school training and part of the reason I wanted to go to Bristol Elvick Theatre School, for example, is because I knew I would do a lot of singing and I would do a lot of dancing because I was really interested in that as well. And I wanted to be able to cover okay. all my bases. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think in the UK on an acting course, you're most likely still going to have to do it, but it's not like a, 
you have to be phenomenal at it. We just want you to be able to, the, the, the drama school would teach you the technique side of it. We just need to see that you're happy to commit and try it. And yeah, like I said, tell a story. Have you ever had uh, someone come in and audition who just nailed the acting part and was just a horrible, horrible singer? <laughs> Oh, I'm asking right. because that's who that's what I would be now, not this not to say that I would nail the acting part but I would be <laughs> the horrible horrible singer Do you know I'm, I'm thinking oh maybe my audition was a bit like that because I wasn't the best singer and this is part of the reason yeah. I started auditioning for musical theatre but then I went the acting route because I had quite a good guidance about doing that because I was not the best yeah. singer at all um but yeah no to be honest I'm just trying to think back I don't think we have. This is it. I think a lot of people think they're a lot worse than they are. Mm. Like normally, it's really interesting to see someone sing a song and do something a little bit differently. But you, you get the odd person come in and sing some like Puccini or something and give you a bit of opera and, you know, blow your socks off. But yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I've never I've never had anyone that awful at singing. And I, if you're watching and you're worried about it, just don't worry about it. Just have fun with it. Truly, okay. truly. Yeah. That's good advice. That's good. Advice. <laughs> good. <laughs> Almost approach it like you're just doing karaoke and having it's fun. Karaoke. And it's another, yeah. I, I see it as the third opportunity to do a monologue. Just so happens you're talking. That's true. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. yeah, that's, hopefully that'll help someone, but um, yeah. yeah, never seen anyone completely sink on the song. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> that's good. That's good to hear. Um, so do you have, uh, different advice for people who are interested in acting, but that some people are much more interested in doing theater and other people are much more interested in getting into film? Yeah, I guess so. I think um, it's really useful to have, in my opinion, a solid foundation in voice technique. So you can fill an auditorium that is 3000 seater without a microphone. I think that's really useful. Brian Cranston does a season at the national. If he didn't have a, you know, he needs to be able to do the theater acting voice work as well as all the film stuff that he's so amazing at. So yeah, I would, if you want to do everything, I think drama school is a really good bet because you're going to cover everything there. Um, but if you are maybe like coming at it a little bit later and film is all you want to do, then yeah, I mean, I'd say that there's certain courses now at drama schools where they just do um, acting for screen, which is quite cool. Um, but personally, again, if you're gonna spend all this money at a drama school, why not learn everything? So should your agent say, oh, there's a really interesting part for the RSC come up, Could right. you, would you wanna do it? Right. If you can't technically sustain eight to 10 shows a week, I, it's, it's just a part that you maybe never will experience. And that's where acting started at the end of the day, isn't it? going off on a little tangent there, but you know, I think, I think it's um, really important yeah. to have a full rounded skill set. Um, yeah. But yeah, if, if, if film is it for you, then yeah, maybe just do a one year MA in acting in screen acting or yeah, do more casting workshops for camera at, you know, the actor center in London or whatever. And yeah, just film yourself more. I think you can learn more by filming yourself and watching yourself back than necessarily. Oh, yeah. 100%. Especially, if, yeah, it's so useful, isn't it? It's such yeah. a good thing to do. Um, but yeah, I think, I think again, long term, do you want to be known for doing everything and be confident enough to be able to do everything? Or do you want to just hone in on just theatre or just film? And if it's theatre, mm -hmm. then I definitely think you should do like a degree course where you can really, mm -hmm. for years, delve into that, you know, yeah. anat anatomy of, of the voice and everything. Yeah. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah, it does. I mean, a lot of this is really interesting to me because it's stuff that I really hadn't thought about either, um, mm. having not gone through those types of programs. In fact, yeah. I just recently during during the pandemic, I took a Zoom class that that was um, voice and movement, kind of more right. like a classical voice and movement class because I'd never done that before. Okay. You know, and I'd, I'd been a working actor for so long, but I never took a proper like voice class and movement class. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I thought that was really interesting and, and certainly I think would have been helpful had I started early on. And the, actually what pushed me to do that was that I had even recognized in some, in some like shows that I had booked that I had worked on. And when I watched myself on the show, I could hear that my voice didn't sound as strong as really? the, the main characters on the show. There were times when I was like, you know what, it feels like I'm kind of mumbling a little bit, which 
honestly, a lot of TV acting has gone to that point, right? Where a lot yeah. of people do tend to mumble and you do see some differences of the people who are uh, classically trained, who have the theater background, who get into TV and, and they're, they're, they're able to mm. tone it all down for television, but still you could hear them very clearly, right? Yeah. Um, and I found that watching back some of my clips where I've worked and I didn't really like you know, how I sounded. And I thought that maybe that was, you know, that was something that was lacking was to get some of that proper voice training. Yeah. Interesting. You clocked that and interesting that you're, you know, open to talking about that as well. Cause I do think, I do think it is different in the States. Like a lot of the Hamilton cast, am I right? Have worked crazy amounts in TV and all yeah. of that sort of thing. And like sprung, you know, sprung from Hamilton and into yeah. television or came from television into Hamilton. But then, yeah, you watch them and they're completely different yeah. um, and so flexible and versatile. And I think, I think, you know, it's such a pressurized business, especially on set. But like, if you're a little bit anxious about something like that, why not invest in learning more about it so you can approach any, yeah. any job with this sense of ease and like release that you know you're gonna be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, but yeah, yeah. Here's interesting. something that I, um, so this, uh, our chat right now, I think I'm gonna be mm. uh, putting up in a week or, or maybe two weeks or something like that. But I have a video that I will probably be putting out today while we're talking okay. um, that it might be a topic that we're gonna disagree on because mm. um, I came from, uh, uh, I didn't go through the theater school, you know, uh -huh. background and almost all of my work has been in on camera, uh, whether it's, you know, company training videos to commercials, to TV, to film, to short films and student films, mm -hmm. indie films, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Almost everything has been on camera. I've done one proper like play my entire career. Amazing. Right. So because of that, uh, my, my next uh, video was is going to be about monologues okay. and what I share in that video is that throughout my entire 13 year career as a working actor not one time has anyone ever asked me to perform a monologue outside of class like I've only done it in class but mm -hmm. never once has an agent or a casting director or a producer or a director or anybody ever asked me to do a monologue so in the video I said are monologues useless you know I, I and and um, yeah, so part of, part of what I say is that, you know, this is coming from someone who really has done only on camera acting. Yeah. I know in the theater world, it's used quite a bit, especially with auditions, monologues are used quite a bit, but with an on camera, with an audition for a TV show or a movie, uh -huh. they've never asked for it. No, exactly. Like, I think I was talking to one of my panelists about this the other day, like, it's kind of ludicrous that we expect you to be able to do three pieces to to zoom now or self tape mm -hmm. that's a monologue like when in the profession do you ever get asked to do that you don't um mm -hmm. maybe like when i was graduating drama school we maybe had to learn um a few extras just to show you know casting directors that came in that maybe couldn't see our graduating showcase or whatever um but aside from that it's it is rare to get to be asked to do a monologue in a really audition. so even in the yeah. theater world like when you audition yeah. for a play you're, you're, I think, yeah, you're normally reading in with someone, just yeah. like a normal kind of script yeah. read. Um, okay. I think some some Shakespeare projects I've done, they have asked for a monologue. But mm -hmm. I think that's just to test from the off your um, your uh, approach to Shakespeare and how you mm -hmm. understand it already. Because there's so many lovely soliloquies in Shakespeare and you can kind of spot mm -hmm. someone's technique for it in a monologue. So... Yeah, some of the Shakespeare productions I've auditioned for, I've had to do um, monologues, but even then some of the time I get to do the whole dialogue with the other character and things. So yeah, yeah I, I think they're good practice and I think they're really good fun because you can decide what the other person is acting and normally you can't decide that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to react to whatever you're getting given from the other performer. Um, but yeah, on the other side, I do think they can be quite self-indulgent sometimes and I do think it's yeah. a weird thing to ask I think people so. to do and in, in yeah. fact I also talk about this in the in the video is that I I, I feel a little bit like um like beginner acting students shouldn't yeah. be training monologues at, for, from the beginning because you become so self-indulgent that's and a really that, good point. that isn't what acting is right you, you should start off working with a partner to put your focus on the partner and learn that side side of it first right I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think most of the feedback I give back in audition, not that I give feedback in the audition, but 
when I'm coaching people is to, to think of the other person, like stop making it about you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I know you're doing a monologue and you know you're doing a monologue as the actor, but you're not. Your actor, your character doesn't know they're not going to get interrupted or the other person's not going to say anything. Yeah. It is, you've got to make it about the other person. And yeah, I think you're absolutely right. From the off, you should be trained to talk to other people when you're acting, not yeah. yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we actually agree on that. I thought we you agree. were saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, um, Here's a, a question that I get all the time from, from people is okay. uh, just the very broad question of how do I get an agent? Oh. Um, and I don't know if that's, and if there's any, anything different from uh, finding an agent in the UK as uh, opposed to finding an agent in the U S but just mm. from your experience, what are, what are the general um, guidelines for someone who's looking to get an agent? It's just a case of, finding the agencies that would be a good fit for you and yeah. reaching out. Like, I think I, I watched one of your videos about that. I think it's a similar sort of thing. You just find these agents or find actors that are similar to you or not necessarily similar to you, but you would really admire, mm -hmm. see who their agent is. And then I do a bit more research about that agency and decide whether or not they'd be a good fit for me. I think it's, I think it's different for every person. Like I've got an agent meeting coming up with someone that I found on Instagram. So mm. I think it's changing, you know, I think mm -hmm. social media and technology is changing the way that we're able to find agencies. But generally, I, yeah, I mean, for me, it was a case of, you know, we, I, would, I went to drama school. So I had a showcase. I had countless casting director meetings and mm. agent meetings. Yeah. Um, but I had a lot of interest from my last show and then I didn't sign with anyone. So I actually left Bristol without an agent. And it was through my first acting job that a friend of mine who I really gelled with on in the cast introduced me to his agent and then I landed my agency that way. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, 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 there's so many different ways to go about it, but yeah. I just think follow your intuition. And, and if you really get a calling for one, really dig into them, do your research and approach them in a non crazy stalker. Uh, well, yeah, I think way. that is a, that's, <laughs> a really, <can> hard. <laughs> that's a really important part of it, right? Is yeah. the research because are the, I, I yeah. at least in the U.S. I'm sure probably in the U.K. as well. There's scam scammers out there who are not real and yeah. trying to trying to just take money from people. Yeah, there's a lot of those kind of um, oh, you pay us to do your headshots yeah. and yeah. yeah. I, I to be fair, I've never really been approached by one, but I again, I think it's kind of common sense, like. You, they take a cut of your income you don't pay them um or, or well think, you pay them after you get yeah. paid that's how I view it but I feel yeah. like it's probably common sense to us having been in the industry but for people True. who haven't you know who aren't in it yeah and, yeah. and the people who have the big dreams and they have mm. someone kind of sweet talking them and saying wow you're you're so good yeah, we can make you a yeah. star you just you know we'll, we'll take your headshots for you and then you're off to Hollywood, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't listen to those people. Know that you're brilliant and you're good and you are yeah. going to be a star probably, but <laughs> yeah, 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 don't pay them any money. <laughs> yes. Don't get the money. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 100%. Um, are there uh, separate agents in, in the UK for if you wanted to get into theater versus film or, or would, you, would you tend to have the same agent that would represent you for both? I think you would have the same, but some agencies specialize more in like big budget movies. Some there's, we call them boutique agencies in London where they're slightly smaller. And a lot of those people still work in film and telly, but they, um, you know, are also a bit more open to, to theater as well. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's so many different kinds, but yeah, some of the bigger ones would, you'd probably be more likely to be doing films and television with them. Um, yeah. but, yeah, it just depends what you want to do. And I think as well with those kind of bigger agencies that are used to having bigger budgets and bigger pay for their actors right. are probably less keen on you doing their acting in plays because it takes up more time. It's less money usually, yeah. uh, unless you're already a big name. Um, so yeah, they kind of want you to be available for the the big money jobs. Um, yeah, usually. I think yeah. that's even, I mean, that's a struggle for actors too, right? When, when, when I started working consistently in, uh, movies and shows yeah you know and there are opportunities to even play like a lead role in a in a play just looking from a financial standpoint it's like ah uh, that's it <laughs> it's hard to that's accept it. this right definitely definitely with film and, and commercials especially you know you do less work and well you do you work hard but you do less yeah. work in a shorter space of time get paid a much bigger paycheck yeah. theater you tend to take up four to 
a year of your life, four months yes. to a year of your life, right. <laughs> rehearsing, touring. It's a lot more inconvenient. Um, and I did lots of theater when I graduated and I loved it and I wouldn't change it for the world. But mm. now as an adult with other priorities and a life, um, I'm a bit more, I probably think twice before doing a long theater season and I want to do more films. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, interesting one. Yeah. Um, another question would be in, in the UK, how would you, uh, how would an actor who doesn't have representation uh, seek out opportunities, uh, auditions for either either theater or for um, film projects? So there's a few different options. There is Spotlight, which I know you wanted to ask me about a little bit, but Spotlight is essentially the online, um, it's where you put your CV, casting directors are all on there, your agent will be on there, and it's how jobs are kind of posted and you apply to them. If you don't have an agent, you can still be on Spotlight mm. um, and Spotlight can almost like represent you as a part of their membership. Mm. Um, obviously it's better to have representation, but you can apply through that. I think you do need to have some professional credits or some experience before you can apply to that. It's been a while since I signed up because I've been on it forever. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. And there was another you need one. To you, have, you need to have some sort of credits I, before I think, you can... Yeah, or some sort of training at least. So even if it was a foundation course or something else, I think oh, you still okay. can look into it. They might, yeah. I think when I was uh, applying for Spotlight, because I went to Bristol Vic, that was fine. So they were yeah. like, yeah, you can come on board. But then um, I think I had a friend fairly recently trying to get on who's not had any formal training. And she, I think you, she said something about maybe having three professional gigs that you can put on there. Mm. Um, so yeah, so it, it can be a little bit tricky, but that uh, is an option as well. So okay. Um, but then there was something, it used to be called Star Now, and I've totally forgotten now what it's called. That's so unhelpful. I'll, I'll let you know, and then okay. you can put it down below yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like, it's a paid resource, and it's mostly things like student films and lower budget, more indie films kind of thing that's okay. on this kind of, it's a, like Spotlight, but a cheaper version um, okay. for, for people that haven't got the support and agency and the training. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's quite useful. And that's a really good way as well to get more showreel footage. So then you can build a showreel. So then yeah. you can get an agent and then you can get on Spotlight. So yeah, um, yeah that's something that a lot of, of people use. And yeah, I think just generally networking and like seeing stuff and going yeah. to theatres and meeting people and asking yeah. questions, you know. Um, but yeah, those are the two kind of main ways to to get in and like um, and, and like getting together with your friends and creating your own content oh, make make your own little short films or yeah. definitely again especially in this day and age with social media and tiktok and youtube right. like it, it's it's madness like it's so easy to make films now and create your own projects like why not do it and just put yourself out there because you never know what will come of it um, exactly. and yeah it's scary but you've got these tools and resources at your disposal. Like, yeah, definitely. And then you can send that to an agency or send it to a casting right. director who you love or want to work with. And yeah, it shows initiative in my, yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you had mentioned that uh, the, the other website that you couldn't remember the name of uh, was a little bit uh, cheaper than Spotlight. How much does yes. it cost to join Spotlight? So Spotlight, I renewed my membership in January. I think it was £155 for the year. Oh, okay. So it's a that full much. Year. Yeah. Yeah. Or so, oh, you can pay monthly as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just paid for the year to get it done. But then, yeah, the other website is more like maybe, I think it was like £50 for a year that mm -hmm. I signed up for it when I was, I'm not on it now, but I, I, when I was on it. Um, so yeah, you're looking at that kind of price range. Is it, I think, is it more expensive in America to be like on SAG and all so, that okay? Um, the website that's similar to Spotlight here right. in the US is called Actors Access. It's okay. the most commonly used one. And that one costs about $68 uh, per oh, year. Oh, okay. Oh, fine. Um, so it's not, it's not bad, it's not that bad. Okay. But Great. then, so yeah, it, that, that leads to my next question. You bring up SAG. Uh, so is there an actor's union or actor's unions in the UK, like SAG-AFTRA in the US? Yes. So there is um, equity. It's okay. just equity. So, so there's equity uh, in the US too. Is it yeah. the same? It's the same equity I think union? So. I think so. Okay. Um, I think in the UK, yeah, again, that's like a monthly membership that you kind of join and it secures mm. your name as well. So mm. it will guarantee that your stage name is 
right. what you want it to be. Right. Um, and if you want to secure your stage name and keep your name or whatever name you want, then you have mm -hmm. to go through equity to make sure that's. But does equity also cover film and television? Yeah. It does. Okay. Yeah, 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 they do. Because here in the U.S., equity is strictly for stage. Um, oh, really? And SAG-AFTRA is for film and television. Oh. And then there's a, there's a few other, there's like, uh, oh, I don't want to misspeak. I can't remember exactly which ones, but, but definitely equity is, is uh, primarily stage. There was SAG-AFTRA had recently combined. It was SAG, which was just film, like Screen Actors Guilds. And then AFTRA was uh, film and television, or not right. uh, no, television and radio. Um, and oh. then SAG-AFTRA merged. So now that's one union which covers pretty much all of the on-camera stuff. Right, um, okay. But then there's also non-union work, right? Yes. So you could be a non-union actor and, and do non-union work, but then once you join the union, you're limited to only doing sure. union. So that's that's yeah. similar in the UK as well? Yeah, similar okay. stuff. And I think with, with equity, it tends to be, I mean, it covers film and everything as well, but you uh -huh. tend to use the term equity. Like, so if you're applying for a theatre job, it will say equity rate. So then you'll know it's that exactly. minimum rate that equity do, but then quite often mm -hmm. they'll say no equity rate, and which means it's less than what the minimum is recommended for actors. So yeah, yeah, it just kind of yeah sets the bar a little bit for employers of actors and okay, for, yep, same thing. Yeah, same yeah. thing here with with the unions. Uh -huh. um, so what are what are some uh, resources for actors that you would recommend uh, in the UK to? Know, learn about the career or or just kind of kind of keep on top of things um well there's a great youtube channel with pippa moss uk yeah. um so yeah that's one <laughs> yeah. no the, i would also recommend so i think obviously with the current climate obviously hopefully when people are watching this in years to come all the pandemic is over with and everything but yeah. getting into rooms like the actor center i've maybe mentioned that three times mm -hmm. now but in london it's a really great um uh you know place the actors can hang out where castings happen where they put on plays where you can do random you know workshops and casting master classes and all of that sort of thing like I recommend just finding something like that yeah it doesn't have to have to necessarily be in London um but you know let's be honest the UK is not as big as America we can all get to London pretty quickly in the UK <laughs> mm -hmm. um so I do recommend you know pop down to London make a day yeah. of it go do a workshop see a play yeah. go home um so yeah. yeah, I definitely recommend things like the Actors Centre. I know up north there's some amazing initiatives um, with a lot of theatres. Obviously, I'm talking mostly about theatre, but yeah, yeah, I just say look into your local area and what your local producing theatre is doing for local people that you can get involved with. Yeah, um, yeah, and in terms of other resources, I mean, YouTube is just full of advice and backstage interviews and footage and just you know. I just like dive into that, really. I think YouTube is an incredible resource and podcasts as well can be really amazing. Um, I actually, I was thinking about this because I was like, oh, what podcast do I listen to about the arts? All of the ones I listen to are American. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I love um, the Ground Up show with Matt Diavella, who's the creator of Minimalism, the documentary. Mm. Um, but he talks a lot to lots of different creatives in lots of different fields about their journey from the ground up in their chosen profession. Oh. Um, so I find that really useful because it's not really UK based, but right. still, I think he in, in, you know, interviews some Brits from time to time. Um, but yeah, I just say, make the most of the streaming services as well. National theater, you can stream everything from the National Theater at the moment. Royal Court, Exchange Theater, Bristol Old Vic Theater, there's just so much online. I just make the most of that. If you're yeah. in America looking to look into more of a UK based career, right now, like it's all online. So just yeah. Google it, YouTube it, find it, stream it, watch it. Yeah, there's so much. There's yeah. so much out there. Um, so sometimes, nice. you know, it gets overwhelming to like to decide what I you want to put your time into. But one yeah. thing that I thought was uh, interesting, because you mentioned your YouTube channel, which is, again, a great resource for for actors. Um, I I've, I've found it was interesting that there aren't um, many of us, so to speak, meaning uh, actors who have YouTube channels who talk about this stuff, because it almost felt like YouTube would be a perfect avenue for actors to get on camera again and, and to, you know, have another creative outlet 
to, mm-hmm. to do something like this, but there are only like maybe a handful of other YouTube channel yeah. actor, actor YouTube channels that, that do this stuff, which I thought was really interesting. I think so. I think it is interesting. And to be honest, like part of the reason it took me so long, because I thought about doing YouTube years ago mm. and just was a bit like, oh, no, but how would that work with like film and TV work? Would they be a bit weird that I'm already on like mm. another platform? And and it's cr- like looking back now, I'm just like, oh, you're just being quite careful and quite maybe naive about it. But like it is another perfect outlet for yeah. you to hone your craft, learn another skill in things like editing and lighting and yeah creating something whether it is tutorial based like we often do or you know comedy skits or yeah. whatever I think yeah if you are an actor watching this and you are thinking like how the hell do I begin you know if you email a casting director or an agent and you're like oh here's my YouTube channel even if you haven't got loads of followers if you've got years worth of you making stuff yeah it just shows that you've got a bit more going on you know so yeah I definitely encourage more people to to think about it and, and then act on it for sure yeah yeah. Um, uh, one thing that you had talked about in one of your videos, and I just want to bring it up, um, is you had mentioned a mental health for actors. Yes. Right? Um, which I think is a is a really important topic, and and it's it's you know it becomes more important the older you get, the more you realize you know how uh, how much it affects you as a human being and and as mm. a performer, mm. right? Um, and I think. It's one of those things that should be kind of taught to uh, people early on, younger, younger people. But at that time, they're probably not ready to hear it. And they're not, Mm. you know, they're not listening to it as much. But it's something that that um, we do need to be thinking like throughout our entire careers and really in our lives. Right. So I'd love to hear you talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think what was standing out for me when I started kind of really tucking into that on my social media and YouTube is that there's this strange myth that actors have to be struggling. Um, I don't know if it's the same in the, yeah, is it same in America? Oh, same thing, yeah. Yeah. I talk about that a lot to get rid of that that, that starving artist mentality. Starving artist, yes. Yeah, get out of that mindset. Oh, it drives me crazy. I think it's such an unhealthy mindset to have. And unfortunately, it's actually normally put onto, I think, creatives by people who are not in the profession. You know, this idea that, oh, if you're going to acting, it's going to be really tough, actually. You'll probably find it really hard, like good luck. Mm-hmm. Kind of preparing you for the, the worst, which is mm-hmm. a good thing to do sometimes. But yeah. it's it's something that you don't have to embrace. Um, and I think like, with my background as a working class performer, I, you know, I didn't have mum and dad's money in the bank to help me live in London and pay my way so I didn't have to work. Like I was juggling, I've been juggling like four jobs forever, you know, mm. alongside acting. Even when I was working full time as an actor, I was still thinking about how to keep that income coming in. So, yeah, I think with this, with mental health, I think it is really important as an actor to realise that your acting career doesn't define you and the roles you play, they don't define you either. Yeah. Your CV, it's, it, it's it's not a measure of your success and your worth as a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And I think however you can learn to deal with the ups and downs that come along with an acting career, like find a way where you can cope with it and bounce back. I always talk as well to my students about the bounce back. You need to be able to take the knock back or have a little pity party if you don't get that audition or it was a bit of a crap audition. And then just realize that life goes on. Rejection is redirection this is part of it and it's about learning how you want to cope with that and you know if it is really tough and you can't do it maybe do step back from it for a little while and learn more about yourself and dig deeper and think okay why am I finding it so difficult but if but but yeah it's going to be different for everyone and everyone's career is very different Mm -hmm. um I've got friends from drama school who you know shot into stardom but their mental health was horrific because they then think that's how it's going to be for the rest of the career and then when they have a quiet two years they're like (gasps) Um, so you know know that you're not alone and reach out I think a lot more like spotlight are doing a lot more about mental health now for our for actors yeah um and I'm really trying to be quite vocal about it because I do feel like there is this enigma that actors should be mysterious and um you know just not bothering about mental health they should just get into the role and yeah yeah. and it's not we're human beings you know we're all humans so yeah well yeah and 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 that's a great way to put it because you know being a human being first and then you know being an actor second yeah 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 Yeah. you've got to know who you are and 
what you're about before you can then embellish another character, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this has been great. I'm, we're approaching the end of what uh, I had written down to ask you about. But uh, the, one of the last questions I had, I actually picked up from uh, your Instagram. So oh, okay. I think you'll recognize this question. Um, can't you just do EastEnders? <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know what? I was not expecting that post to get as much feedback <laughs> as it did. Oh my gosh. This yes, strikes it. so much in the hearts of many actors because we hear <laughs> those types of questions all the time. Oh, can't you just get on Grey's Anatomy? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, no. So if you haven't seen the post, Kurt's referring to a post I did about um, my mum always saying, can't you just do EastEnders, Philippa? That's like what my mum has always said to me since I was say 18 it was probably younger than that yeah just this idea that people think you can just get into a show and just walk onto the set and no. and get the part and get paid for it um yeah so I, I posted that quote can't you just do EastEnders um and yeah the amount of actors that were like oh yeah <laughs> my yeah. best friend says that to me all the time or my dad says that to me all the time Hilarious. yeah super common <sighs> um, good I'm not so alone. is there is there uh Anything that uh, I didn't ask you that you would love to get off your chest about, um, uh, I don't know, about London, about the UK, about, about acting in general? Yeah, I think it probably, I'd probably just want to add about the mental health thing, you know, just mm -hmm. know that you're amazing as you are with or without an acting job or without, without an agent. Right, and right. so much of being an actor is just constantly looking to improve your craft and your knowledge and your experience. So yeah, similar to what I said at the beginning, beginning as well, like if you do wanna pursue a career in the creative arts, like it's think long-term, be confident in who you are, experiment, play, don't judge, don't second guess yourself and just look after yourself as best you can. Mm -hmm. You know, Treat yourself, get a massage if you're feeling a bit blue, <laughs> buy yourself a treat after you get that audition through or if you get that job, you know, and just, yeah like you said you're you first yeah. act a second have a life have a life is what i'd say i'm going to take some of that advice because i've i've actually never gotten a professional massage before so maybe i should maybe i need to do that kurt you don't know what you're missing my friend oh my goodness get one book one point. as soon as you can yeah, yeah. best thing ever <laughs> Uh, okay, great. So where can people find you? Um, we've already mentioned your YouTube channel, which is Pippa Moss UK, but where else yep. can they find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram at Pippa Moss UK and Twitter at Pippa Moss UK. Twitter's more um, acting related usually. And my Instagram's just a bit more about my life and living, mm -hmm. living as an actor and all of that jazz. Um, yeah, and those are the best places to find me. So and if people want to find you for one-on-one -on -one coaching, mm -hmm. where should they contact you? you can just drop me an email or a dm on instagram so my email is pippa moss actress at gmail.com and yeah reach out i'd love to hear from you and check out my channel because i've got loads of tips on there as well even if that's all you want so yeah 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 um really quick why the uk at the end of all of your handles i have no idea I have no idea. I was thinking, what can I put? Because I was Pippa Moss actress for a while. Mm -hmm. But that was too long for Instagram. Oh. And then it was it was too long for Twitter, I think, or something. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I need something universal that I can put on all of my like outlets. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm from the UK. So <laughs> Pippa Moss UK it is. And there it is. that's there it is. That's why. <laughs> oh, I think it's catchy to add that UK at the what end. What do you think? So yeah, it's a little yeah. interesting. Adds a little flair, adds a little, it's a little different than uh, everybody else. Yeah, um, yeah and I'm a British actress, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm a, yeah that's what I was going for, yeah. I guess. Okay, so um, last question. Uh, okay. If you were not an actress, if you were not involved in the industry at all, what do you think you would be doing? Good question. So when I was younger, I loved designing dresses. Mm. I would like just draw dresses all the time. So I always thought I'd probably be like some sort of wedding designer or like wedding dress designer or some sort of designer for fashion. Not that I'm particularly fashionable. I'm not. One so of when you were taking style. breaks from acting out Mary Poppins, you were designing yeah. dresses. Yeah, I had my little crayons and pastels and I was drawing frocks 
in my little notepad. <laughs> um, but failing that, I think I, my uncle was quite a big inspiration to me. And he was a police officer. So I, I talked to him at quite a lot when I was, you know, approaching 16, mm -hmm. thinking about sixth form, or I was thinking about like police academy or maybe even the army or the RAF or something. Wow. So yeah, and I'm really interested in that. I've done loads of like stage combat and movement. Like I'm quite an experienced fighter. Yeah. So um, yeah, I feel like that's an itch I've never quite scratched going down the, you know, military route. But yeah, which is quite the contrast, isn't it? When well, we'll put that out history. into the universe that you will book a role where you are playing the badass military designer, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that. Thank you. I'm receiving that from the universe. It's coming. My dream role. Great. All right. Amazing. Um, Pippa, thank you so much for joining me. This was, this was awesome. Thank you for having me. It's been a joy and I love your work, Kurt. Keep it up. You're doing amazing stuff. So thank helpful. you. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate Thanks that. And, um, like I, the way, the same way I end all of my YouTube videos, I hope to see you on set someday. Yeah. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Thanks right. a lot, Kurt.